on some of those things too. So we're going to start with Jasmine. Hello, my name is Jasmine Medina. Um, I'm in fifth grade, and my mom and my dad came with me today. And my favorite thing about Washington Elementary is that there's so many good teachers here. Hi, my name is Savannah Harrington. My mom and dad came with me. I'm in fourth grade. And my favorite thing about school is how the teachers never give up on you. My name is Kayvon Bonner. My mom came to watch me. My favorite thing about school is math and reading. My name is Wilma Washington. I am in second grade. My mom, my, my cousins, and my sister. My favorite thing about school is the science kids. I'm Carly Bolden. First grade. Shelby High, 
and he went on to win the district championship. I mentioned this uh, contest has been revised, revived a little bit. For many years, Mr. E.B. Clayton, one of our distinguished county educators, headed it up. And of course, he passed away, but we have since revived it, and we want your students to participate in it. I have given out some information packets. They were a little slow this year getting them to me in the mail, but I got some of the information off of the internet, and I will get more information to you as time comes. We do ask that you send the packets uh, directly to the principals. They, will, uh, they can have either a little school contest or have the teachers pick out somebody, one from each school, and send them to our contest, tentatively set for January 10th, Saturday, in the Fellowship Hall of the Lutheran Church, where it has been the last two times. As I mentioned, we have had a district champion come out of Cleveland County Schools last year. I want to challenge you to send us a state or national champion. I believe you have the caliber of students to do it. I've heard them participate in the contest, so what are we waiting for? Thank you very much. Appreciate the lead by Dr. Fisher. We have a draft teacher contract that will be used for employees with ending dates. This is a change in our contract and in these approval, as well as the
What's the reasoning behind that? The, re the reason behind that, but there are some things here that a uh, person might want to vote on and some that he, that he would want to vote on. And if they're all together, you're, you're voting on something that you might want to vote for. And you're, uh, you know, because if I set my mind on something that I'm going to vote against, I'm going to vote against, and then I'm voting down everything, then some of those things I might want to vote for. But I guess my question would be, like in section one, there's probably, I'm just, just looking at it, probably 15 to 20 personnel actions on that. Is that correct? That's correct. If you had a problem with one of those and you voted against that, that would also show that you were well, against it. Well, every one of them separate thing, and all 20 of them. Well, I'm just asking my question. Well, and, uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I was trying to break it down a little bit, but uh, we, uh, I'm just saying we're voting on all 29 of them individually. We already have a motion on the floor. I'm willing to accept uh, as a whole and then if I want to vote against or if I want to vote for or and anybody else, but this issue's come up on several different occasions by others too. <coughs> Any other discussion? Yeah, I think Mr. Glover's question is very valid. Um, I, I guess the reason why I think it's okay to vote on a um, separate action wide is just for clarification, more clarity um, as far as the information we are presenting it. And I'm fine with um, the particular motion that he made in separating just action wide. Any other Yes, sir, Mr. Holder. I have a little concern about breaking the personnel uh, things apart because it's, this board's that it role is to approve or disapprove, normally to approve what the superintendent tells us uh, gives us. I don't have personal knowledge of each of these candidates. I've not read their applications. I've not read their recommendations. I've not read their evaluations. Uh, I feel very inadequate to uh, talk about one of these candidates without having done all the homework. I just don't feel that, and that's something I certainly am not looking to do, uh, to sit down and go through and review all the pros and cons of each and every one of these 20-some people in this first category. The light, the certainly uh, people, the teachers and the bus drivers and custodians. Uh, I really can't say I won't vote for this one or that one without uh, looking at each one of them individually. I have to trust the superintendent and the principals that have made these recommendations that they have done their homework and they have looked at these people, they've interviewed these people. I haven't. Uh, so I, you know, the question is basically is a matter of trust that the superintendent and our staff has done the job. I have to either, I think you have to either vote them up or you have to be you serious, but I'll look at uh, replacing uh, those people that you're, that are in charge of hiring. Because I, I certainly am not qualified to break these things down. Thank you. Any other comments? I recommend Mr. Holder to I'm looking at the list, uh, I didn't interview, uh, I didn't see any information on them. Um, Ten people could have applied for one job, or 50 people, or one, or whatever. And, uh, and we've got two principals out here, and I have to trust that uh, when you make a recommendation to the superintendent that you feel that you've hired the best person for the job, and I think that's bring that to our superintendent, he brings it to us, and it's up to us to trust that everyone's done their job, not just Dr. Fisher and um, Ms. Wampler and her staff, uh, but also our principals, and I... I agree to an extent, um, and I very quickly will say, don't, don't get me wrong, um, I do think we have very qualified people in the place and I support them 100%. And I feel like if, if I take it that way, you know, why isn't all just, just information? You know what I mean? Like, there, it's an actionable item and we have to vote on it anyway. The reason why I said it is because, you know, narrowing it down, making it more efficient in my opinion, 
um, is really no different than what we're doing in the first place. We're just clarifying which particular, particular actionable items um, that we're voting for. Now that doesn't mean that I have, I lack confidence in our system or anything like that. I just want to clarify that on my part. Um, but, you know, I'm buying either way. I just, I, that's why I say that the motion was, I do think it can be more efficient for the way we do business. I guess I see it kind of opposite, that it's more efficient to vote on the personnel report. I agree with what they've said that um, our job is not to vote on each person that the school system hires. We, we vote on one person, and that's the superintendent. And then we vote to approve or disapprove the personnel report. We have this for, as Dr. Hammer said, a couple, of, no, excuse me, almost a week ahead of time that there are individuals that are either being recommended for employment or their leaves are recommended for a leave of absence. If there's an individual that you have a question about or a problem with, you can talk to Dr. Fisher and, and find out some of the reasons behind that, if you have questions for any of uh, That's the way I see our role as, as board members to, to get those answers ahead of time so that you can come to this meeting prepared to either vote or, or disapprove. And so I, I don't see the, the purpose in separating these items. Well, uh, just one, one. If anybody else wants to speak, they've got the opportunity to speak first. Then yeah. they will come to you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I simply say this, and that's the case of the reason, and we have to deal with the process that we have to do. Mr. Blank. Well, I brought one issue to the table on several different occasions, and I'm still not satisfied, and that's the reason I want to get separated and not vote against everything because of their one person here that, uh, that I have brought to this whole board. We draw the ball on this person. Not this person, and I don't discredit anybody, Dr. Fisher, or anybody's done it, but we draw the ball on a person here that's in his personnel report. And we put an ending date that I'm not a bit satisfied with under no circumstance because she should have been hired four years ago. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, that's just a discussion. All in favor of Mr. Blanton's motion, say aye. Aye. Say aye. All opposed? No. Aye. I believe that the day is happening. Do I hear another motion? Can I ask a question? Yes. Because I think with that motion, the contract got locked in there with the personnel. No, there are two separate things. Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Okay, because that's the way I see it. That's two separate. That's why I'm questioning. Okay. There's approval of the contract. As far as approval, there are two separate things. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. To approve the teacher contract with the fixed end and date. No, no. Draft contract. Okay, you just want to go with the draft contract. For right now. For right now. Okay, make a motion to approve that contract. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the draft contract. Any discussion? I vote yes. Uh, I vote against the contract. Contract because this employee is getting an ending contract date and she shouldn't be getting nothing. I'm getting any No, no, no. I mean, I'm not asking for a vote. It's a discussion. And I, I think Mr. Blank was discussing it in the form of he made that. I think that's the way he was expressing his feelings. Uh, I would like to ask a question of Dr. Fisher. What uh, occasions or what would occasion a they ending contract, uh, uh, fixed contract. What's the proper term? Well, it is, it, it's changed because we, we did want to be more efficient in, in working with our attorneys to make sure that we have the proper language here moving forward that we position our, our school system and our employees in the best shape. Basically, with this contract, uh, if, 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 
employee work less than the required number of days in the school year to qualify for, for a new contract. If they're a part-time employee, uh, if they're a non-permanent position, that means they're, they're hired with what they call soft funds, it means funds that may not be back every year. Or if they're a retired person, they will bring it back in those areas that are a fixed contract. This, this position, this, this contract that Ms. Wanderers worked with our terms on, positions our school system to, to be more efficient and to serve our folks better than what we've had in the past. So, uh, and, you know, as a result of some of the discussions we've had, we have worked with our attorneys to update this program. Dr. Fisher, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you just clarify, um, under soft funds, would you, is that like pre-K money? It could, uh, be, could be pre-K money, it could be Title I money, those funds, <coughs> excuse me, that you don't, you May or may not get. We, you know, we, we can, they expect to get, but, but the term is used a lot of times as soft ones that you, you're not guaranteed to get next year. This is it just protects the school system uh, as well as the employee. Right. Okay. Thank you. I think what Dr. Fisher is done here is great, and it'll, it'll fix what's happening to this particular person that I'm talking about in the future, that that won't happen again. So it's not that I'm against, against that contract, but I am due to she, that she's gonna be involved in this contract too. And, and, and she's in a position that we put her in that position. She didn't put herself in that position. And that's the reason I'm voting. But I think his contract, uh, what he's doing, He's, going, he's trying to fix where this will never happen again, but that's not that's not right to that person. That's what that's where I'm reaching to. Then that's your opinion, right? And I think he will agree with me. Dr. Fisher will agree with me on that to a certain to a certain degree, and that's the reason he's doing what he's doing in this one or two. Uh, they're doing this contract, but she's she's going to be. Plot for right in this contract if we vote for, uh, if it passes to go. That uh, thank you. Any other discussion? Right now we're just voting on the this draft contract. We're yes. voting on any people with this yes. just this contract. Uh, yeah, but that person's going to be involved in this contract. But but this contract's not just for that one person. This is no, for any anybody. future employees that are hired for right. the ending day. And this contract makes it very clear what 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 the what the contract is between the employee and the school system. That there is an issue <coughs> and why there is an issue. And, and it also clarifies the reason why you would use the contract at the end of the day. And I think that's the, the important part of this contract, is it's just not a contract with an ending day. It clarifies the reason to make sure that reason that we would use one is, a, is an appropriate reason for something that protects the school system and the employee to be involved. Right. If, if, I was, if I was a teacher being hired that way, I would clearly know that my day is ending and why I was hired that way. Okay. But in the past, we have had our, we have our people with an ending day contract. That's right. Have we not? So this is not a new Method. There are some tweaking. There's some tweaking, but that's it. Right. That's correct. But this, we've always hired people with index. However, this contract makes it wraps around why you were hired with index or why I was hired with index. We only hire different people hired for index for different reasons. So it clarifies that so that we can handle those situations more effectively and efficiently. And that's what I wanted to applaud the work of the team on. It's clear, it's effective, it's not general. Back to what I was saying earlier, it's getting down to the specifics, which is what I was talking about on the last time, but I'll let that go. But it gets down to making us more efficient in the sense, um, you know, that we can get to the bottom of it and protect us. And that's why I call the central office on that work. Any other comments? If not, uh, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor of the motion? Any contract? Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank you. Now on to the personnel board actions. 
any further discussion? Anybody in this falls? Yes, sir. Uh, it's nothing to Mr. Lee on this, but uh, I think we need to get Mr. Garber uh, about on our money, on our new construction on this oratorium in North Shelby School. We need to really be a talking on that as soon as possible. Thank you. I'm sure that will be occurred. Uh, one thing is true. ROTC money. Nothing there. Well, what's the deal with the RTC? Are we funding that, or it's a, it's a reimbursement system? So we actually, they don't cover the cost of the uh, RTC officers that they have out there. But they do the partial funding. We we fund the, the, the expenditure to make it fly our actual expenses for them. Okay. They're, 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 they partially fund the program. They do not entirely. All right. Thank you. Be no further discussion. All in favor of the motion now on the floor. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Passes unanimously. On to the addition to use good and contract uh, and an explanation. Mr. Chairman, uh, again, I apologize for bringing this contract to you uh, late, but if you notice the email that I got it by 17 Thursday. of what's going on in this process. This is a brand new audit that we have to do because of uh, the changes in the defined benefit pension disclosure and the part of the state's budget. That this has to be done. Uh, we were lucky, unlucky, or if you want to call it, selected as the guinea pigs or part of the group that is the initial uh, audit process. Ultimately, all systems will be subject to this audit since they were the first group in there. And that's part of the real problem that we've got. The state treasurer, and I'll read to you. In my almost fifth emails, we were indicating that we would provide a template engagement uh, letter contract officers to use for the test engagement needed to complete the work requested by the USA. However, however, after further consideration, we have decided to not produce a technical engagement letter contract. It would take time for us to develop such a document and get the necessary signs. Since the engagement agreement is should be the place for the work being performed, we do not want to hold that process up by going through the approval process, particularly on our end. So, so they, they passed the uh, That's the reason the auditors have to pay uh, a lot of problems with it. There's another email from the one of the auditors that requested special guidance from the relevant city and we were unable to get that. So everybody's been pushed back with this process. That's the reason they got the information to us late. That's the reason, unfortunately, I'm bringing that contract to you today. Again, it's a requirement by the State Treasury Office. Uh, it's mandated. In other words, it's mandated, but no funding. Would it have made any difference if they had been funding required if they had uh, done a template? No, it would have made any difference. Uh, probably, uh, like everything else, though, probably they'll go through this first year of the learning phase of this. Very more, more efficient, more effective next year. It probably would cost you this less going forward than it's costing us. What would it cost?
Or is it read the display documents? Everybody that's going through this, I'm sorry. Everybody that's going through this process is a second audit in addition to the record office. So now, in the school system, it's panels, libraries, it's cities, it's uh, utilities, there are uh, parts of the uh, government units. It's, it's everybody. It's everybody that's sitting with the either the teacher or the local government to the top of the system. But don't we have them hired to be as be our auditor that we're paying a we long sum? We do have them hired as our auditor and they are doing additional work in the contract that is from the state treasurer. She makes it clear that there is a second contract for these specific services. You know, we ask you to do some things extra, you know, get extra pay for it. And uh, our teachers do a whole lot. Uh, and our principals work 24 7. And they don't get extra pay. I uh, I think we need to tighten up. I don't need uh, Tell them we can put it out for bidding. Somebody else, can we do that? We can. Or has to be completed by February 17th. When did we get this letter? Thursday, and it's got to be done by October 17th. Maybe we need to file for extension. If we do things right, we're getting bids on jobs.
check to see as far as they can tell whether we're withholding the right, we, we're, we're taking retirement benefits for everybody we should and sending money down to Raleigh, but they haven't been moved down to Raleigh exactly how they're reported. And it's, it's, I guess, fluid would be the best